Good morning guys, how are we all doing? Happy hump day, welcome to Wednesday everybody. I am Dan from Trading With Dan. This is our Bitcoin morning update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go straight over to those Bitcoin for our charts. So as you can see, we have quite nicely made it above uh, this uh, this roughly $44,000 level. Uh, price actions managed to maintain above it, which is obviously good, uh, looking like a potential uh, potential bull flag. So uh, I guess we are kind of waiting for either either break above the recent highs around uh, 44,700 or 800 to then accelerate us into into the resistance above or we potentially break down below this uh, 43 43 700 area uh, or level not area level and then uh, yeah and then we could see a move back we could see a move back towards uh, this uh, support area or we could move maybe just down to we did, we could put in like an interim horizontal around here maybe we just get down to about 42 43 uh, forty-two and a half, forty-three thousand dollars. Uh, just depends on how bullish the market is. Uh, obviously, uh, things easing off over there in the Ukraine, which is allowing the stock market, the S and P here, to bounce. Um, from this pullback, which uh, is looking is looking good now for a higher low, even if we don't uh, today. Uh, break above this resistance and make our way back into the next level we could we can potentially grind this area out a little bit maybe not uh, maybe not test all the way back down to these lows and then ultimately break onwards and upwards um, but yeah obviously some positivity there um, is obviously is feeding through into into Bitcoin uh, 10 year yield is up there though but this is uh, obviously uh, moving up in uh, in sympathy with uh, risk on which is not the worst thing it's not an ideal level for the 10 year yield to be going at don't get me wrong it's going to cause all sorts of problems but uh the actual uh, directional move up based on risk on is not the worst thing uh this dollar index uh moved down as well into support area again uh, again predicated on on a risk on on just a risk on move um just because of the uh the uh the easing of tensions uh but yeah uh, into the support though so if we can break through this support uh that would look good for a uh, just good for risk assets and obviously a move down however it is, uh, it is likely we do have a bounce here. We are on a 4 out of 9 and we are at support and this is an area of a lot of previous price actions. So uh would uh, just look normal for us maintaining here. But yeah, if we have another uh, another uh, another gangbuster day in the stock markets and, uh, and then easing off intentions and all that fun stuff, clearly the dollar may uh, start to make a move down through this support area. Just extend this along because this will be our next level of support. Um, gold easing off somewhat as well. Uh, funnily enough, hit an exact level up here. Uh, it's funny how this is why we prefer horizontals. Um, we just prefer horizontals, don't we? Uh, but yeah, hit that level uh, and obviously uh, eased off. So uh, can it maintain above 1840? Currently, it's quite a quite a way above it. I say it's quite a way. It currently is above it, but. We do know, we do know those uh, those uh, millions upon millions of um, of futures contracts that get smashed in the, in the wee hours of Sunday of illiquid Sunday morning markets uh, by some unknown person that wants to uh, sell a lot of gold at the worst possible price that they can they can get in the most illiquid markets uh, in in uh, price manipulation. But um, but yeah, we shall see because it would be very easy for this to get slammed back down. Um, let's look at yeah. Obviously, uh, oil futures easing off, easing off somewhat, but clearly in a nice bullish uptrend. This will have a larger correction at some point, but structurally, uh, we know the uh, the the woke uh, um, ESG uh, clowns basically are uh, just they don't really care about uh, about uh, about increasing petrol and energy costs and and just normal people not being able to afford these and getting squeezed. They just uh care about uh, virtue signaling and, and apparently climate change on a planet that has been uh, shifting in temperatures for its, its entire existence and will continue to do so um, so <laughs> but that's another that's a story for another time um, but yeah either way like I said structurally is bullish maybe we get a pullback obviously driven off the back of um, 
of conflict uh, uh, possibilities as well. Uh, Bitcoin dominance uh, still well above this support level, well above the trend line. Um, it needs to uh, be a bit of a fake out if we are going to continue uh, bullish with the with the altcoins versus Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty a pretty healthy substantial uh, retracement. I mean, this larger time, this larger trend line, as you can see, it is actually uh, it is if we zoom out, it is a. Uh, it is a, a larger pattern as you can see here so it is not the worst thing at all if you look at where how how long it's come from 2019 it clearly isn't uh, too relevant the fact that we're above that trend line now i will just look at the resistance levels uh that we've got joining and we are above this uh well old resistance new support so we need to break break back below there and then our next important one is is up here as well uh so so yeah keep an eye on that uh the ethereum uh ethereum satoshi pairing um bouncing off uh of this off this uh support level here uh still in a as you can see a medium term downtrend is looking very nicely like a a, a descending broadening wedge uh out off the back of a move up here but clearly in a, in a longer term a medium term downtrend um but nonetheless descending broadening wedges potentially bullish we are towards that top top end of it uh, so we could see an acceleration. The target would only be this resistance area and ultimately we need to make it through that resistance area. Um, USD pairing did have, obviously have a nice bounce above its support. Uh, currently negotiating a few horizontals and areas of price action, but we'll just extend this along here. As long as uh, as long as we can realistically maintain in here, we could look like a we could look like a nice uh, a nice uh, inverted head and shoulders here, and then see a nice accelerated move to the upside. Uh, yeah, the net line I probably would just uh, just leave as this horizontal area, and then yeah, so we can we can probably draw a, a bit of a um, a rough a rough estimate uh, of price targets uh, based on this. We we'll move this along. We'll have it roughly. Yeah, in fact, they are very uh, <laughs> very nice price targets. They get us basically deep deep into what would be. Uh, what would be very bullish, uh, bullish uh, areas, uh, as in the trend to be fully, fully bullish, and then we we'll be looking for new all-time highs. So uh, yes, uh, if that is to play out, uh, then uh, yeah, good thing, good things to come for Ethereum um, for sure. Uh, yeah, nothing else really to look at on there. So let's look at those stochastics. It was those uh, medium time frames, the uh, the 10, 12 around daily war kind of watching uh obviously the large longer ones than that were looking fine uh yeah four hour uh, a bit a bit toppy here and coming down uh it's 10 12 on daily we want turning back up and moving back up now uh oh well 10 hours moving up all along maybe it's a 12 hour yeah 12 hour moving up nicely here now from a low level and yeah daily has turned back up in the bullish zone as well so yeah all these are looking good for at least supporting price action uh, trying to take us up to a, te a test of the top of the range. Two day getting a little bit toppy here though, but three day got all the all the rooms, all the all the field to run into, along with uh, uh, along with obviously a three day and five day, uh, and then obviously uh, bi weekly with that little bit of a kink in it, and then weekly turning up with again all the field to run into. Uh, so yes, uh, if things de-escalate. Uh, if the uh, the fear over the uh, the 800 Fed rate hikes we're going to have this year, and then the 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 the, uh, the conflicts are going to calm down, and we just go we hit a sweet spot, a, a, a post uh, Omicron opening sweet spot, and then we can worry about uh, about market crashes and things uh, in uh, in well in in basically anything over two months time or so. Uh, that would be that would be my view. We are potentially going to enter a sweet spot for hopefully a couple of months, maybe more, maybe even more than that. Uh, and then we've got to start to really carefully look at things, look at how things are transpiring uh, towards the end of the year. So uh, or towards the mid, the mid, the mid to end of the year anyway. Uh, Q3 time, Q3 time. If we're lucky, if we only need to worry about uh, market crashes in Q3, and we've had a good run all the way through, uh, obviously the rest of this Q1 and Q2, then yeah, that that would be, uh, in my opinion, at the moment, the best we can hope for. So, but uh, yeah, there we go, guys. Remember, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Always do your own research, and I shall speak to you guys soon.